How's it going guys? Kyle here with Former Ranch and today I'm pretty excited to be talking to you about one of the most useful tools to date that is currently in my tool belt and that is going to be the Dark 30 Defiance 640. So in a nutshell, what is it? It's a PTZ camera that is intended to be vehicle mounted. PTZ meaning pan, tilt, and zoom. So you can look around, you can zoom in on things and that feed is fed inside your vehicle in real time. So it has a 640 core sensor uh, rocking a 32 millimeter lens. On top of that, it does have a less than 30 net D sensor rating, so it is fairly sensitive and it did a pretty good job. And it does use standard micro SD cards. Now I do wanna disclose that Dark30 did reach out to me seeing if I'd be interested in testing this and they did send this my way. There's no other form of compensation. This is my unit to keep and I plan on using it in videos to come, but for transparency purposes, I did wanna disclose that I did not pay for this, it was sent to me. So I like to be transparent with you guys as always and wanna throw that out there. So before we get into this any further, gotta give a quick shout out to the current channel sponsors, Warhammer Armaments. They dabble in all things night vision and thermal. Optics Planet, you can use code 4MRR to save yourself at least 7% off everything site-wide. And the 4MR Patrons. So if you aren't aware, I am involved on Patreon. I give something away on the first of the month, every month. Go check it out. Info to all those supporters in the link tree below. Now, circling back to the Define 640, I made the bold claim it's one of the most useful and utilized tools, for that matter, in my tool belt right now. And I do sincerely mean that. So a little bit of context here. What I was doing hog hunting was driving around the perimeter of our ranch and I would have to stop every so often or roll windows down, scan as much as I can, drive the vehicle a little bit, you know, pivot, get some good view angles, get out, try to step on either the tailgate or on the, um, the runners on the side of my truck, try to get some elevation and scan the property as best I can. So point being that I had to stop interrupt my actual uh, movement and then risk making noise or spreading scent. Uh, with this thing, it, it's been a game changer. Three for three hunts now. We've just been driving around and driving around continuously. So we got the driver, obviously driving the vehicle, me being the passenger, I'm sitting there with a the remote and I'm panning around and I'm searching for things. So we spotted hogs multiple times now, several hundred yards away. And the beauty of it is that instead of having to stop and disrupt the environment to try to strategize, we saw them in advance, didn't have to get out of the vehicle, didn't have to stop moving. And as long as we knew the wind direction in advance, we can kind of drive into the area as needed, close the gap to a couple hundred yards and then get out and go to work. So this thing allowed us to see things that I honestly think we wouldn't have spotted or would have spooked prior to ever spotting them in a normal um, hunting manner. So this gave me the absolute capability to kind of change the game. So I wanted to give you a little bit of context up front on how I've actually been fielding it and using it now pretty regularly for hunting purposes. On gravel roads, driving through our ranch, we did take it uh, up to 50 miles per hour while mounted to the vehicle and virtually no issues. It got rained on a little bit, um, a lot of dust being kicked up, the image didn't really degrade, and actually the image stabilization is very impressive. So I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm assuming it's a digital stabilization on board, but when you're going over those gravel roads, the image isn't vibrating like crazy. You could actually maintain a clear and, and visible image. So before I get any further, if you want to skip ahead to the sample footage and details, then by all means do so. But I do want to briefly show you what comes out of the box because it is a lot of things included, everything you could possibly need. It comes in such an impressive and frankly an oddly satisfying package just how nice and tidy and organized it is. So first of all, uh, it comes in what appears to be an actual authentic name brand Pelican case. So not a cheap knockoff case that's going to uh, potentially expose this fairly expensive device to uh, risk of damage when you're transporting it or storing it. So when you open it, this is what you are greeted by. So oddly satisfying presentation there. When you remove this top cover, that's when you're gonna see all of the included components. And there are quite a few, so I will just kind of briefly run down what is included. So obviously first and foremost is going to be the Defiance 640 itself. And just initial impression is that it is built like a freaking tank. It's a completely metal construction. It feels like it is actually designed to be used, strapped to the outside of a vehicle and the elements going off road over bumps, etc. does not feel like it's cheap or flimsy in the slightest. You'll notice the next biggest object in there 
is this display. So it does come with a very generously sized display. Now speaking of the display, it comes with a suction cup mount for your windshield. But if you dig a little further, there's just continued surprises packed in here. A nice clamp so that you can, if you want to use it in like a, uh, some kind of side by side, you can clamp it to the, uh, the roll cage, so to speak, if you don't have a windshield. But you can further adapt with a magic arm and get that display position where you would like it. So that is included there. You have a wireless remote. They included batteries once again they went with name brand they didn't even give you cheap batteries which is nice so so far everything in here seems to be holding true in terms of quality now you have a variety of hardware and tools for your mounting additionally you have a series of suction cup feet for the camera itself you also have some alternative magnetic feet which i personally think this is what i'm going to opt to use i'm not too worried about putting that on the roof of my truck. So if you are a little bit more anal about your things, then maybe you wanna use the suction cup feet um, if that makes more sense for you. You then have a series of power cables and then your actual video signal cables are provided and included as well. So everything you need is in this box and it has a home so that when you're stowing it, not only is it protected, but you can tell if you're forgetting something or leaving something behind especially if you are gonna use this for nighttime hunting and scouting. When you're using things in the dark, it's very easy to leave things behind. Ask me how I know. Although I think setup is pretty intuitive, I did wanna just give you some brief overview on what goes together. So first things first, the SD card goes in the front there. On the left-hand side is where you're gonna find your power port as well as your HDMI feed. Now you wanna make sure this is on the left-hand side so that when you do the return to home, the camera goes front facing. So the HDMI plugs into that left hand side and it does have some little screw down points that it does not come unplugged inadvertently and you keep a good video feed when you're going on your off-road excursion with this thing. What I like to do next is just start preparing the cables. I kind of get them ready to feed into the cab. Now this is gonna be your preference but what you're gonna do is plug in a 12 volt splitter. So one power cable goes to the camera itself. You wanna make sure you grab the longer one because the camera needs to go outside of the vehicle. There is a shorter one where you plug that into the monitor. Obviously you don't need as much length so just use some common sense there in terms of which one to route. Once you have your feet of choice selected, you go ahead and install it on top of the vehicle. Now, make sure you line it up nice and centered and front facing to make orientation simpler when you are navigating with this. But once it's on there with those magnets, it's not going anywhere. I can shake the entire truck and the base does not move at all. Next, you wanna choose the mounting interface that works best for you for the monitor itself. I have just been using the suction cup one for the windshield and it's been really solid. It hasn't come loose once hasn't fallen hasn't shifted so i've been pretty happy with it thus far once you plug it into your 12 volt power source it does automatically come on and come to life you can tap the buttons on the side of the monitor if you're not getting a response and it will boot right up but the camera does power on automatically there is not an on and off button on the camera Next, you'll just wanna grab the remote. Now, it is gonna be in a sleep mode until you actually press one of the buttons. Give it about five seconds, and then you'll notice it automatically connects to the camera, and there is almost no latency. I haven't had any signal interference whatsoever from inside the cab, which has been very nice as well. So, like I showed you briefly, everything that you could want comes in this case, and it is a nice um, Pelican case to keep things safe. I have actually been using it, um, storing it in the case. Let's talk about some lessons learned uh, while fielding this device. First of all, I've only used the magnetic feet. I have not used the suction cup feet. Uh, they advertise, I think I read in the manual somewhere, 100 pounds for the magnets. I'm not sure if that's combined or individual. I think that's probably combined. Um, that being said, when you're using the magnetic feet and you're trying to position it on the vehicle, just be careful. Uh, don't have your fingers under there. I recommend you grab it by the side here, not by the actual gimbal, but the the actual frame part so that you don't have your fingers under it because those magnets are stupid, stupid strong. One time uh, when I was using it, I kind of was trying to guide it like so. And when those <laughs> magnets grabbed, uh, yeah, uh, I, I won't make that mistake again. Um, I thought maybe I had even broken my finger. It hurt, it was kind of throbbing for a good week there. But learn, learn from me, don't uh, learn the hard way like I did. So that's say, 
the magnetic feet are incredibly strong and I had full confidence that this thing wasn't going anywhere and it virtually didn't. It's actually a bit of a challenge to get it off, but I'd rather be hard to get off than um, too easy to get off. Now setting this thing up for the first time, you know, there's always a learning curve with everything. I'd say now that I've used it several times, uh, from totally unpacking it from the case here, it's about a five minute setup, if that. Uh, if you choose to leave this base connected, you could maybe cut it down to a three. And that leads me to one little bit of a nitpick that I have is that this base, for whatever reason, the foam inside is not cut to just leave the base installed. I'm not sure what the logic is on even having this separating base. Maybe there's different uh, mounting options to come or that I'm not aware of admittedly, but uh, these are two separate pieces as you see it uh, assembled here. And to stow it perfectly in the case, you do have to take them apart. So that adds a little bit of time. Otherwise, it's incredibly plug and play. You have a power splitter that you then feed one power cable, a shorter one to the monitor, a longer one to the camera uh, so that you have some actual uh, lead to get out of your vehicle. Now, user experience may vary. Maybe you have a sunroof, maybe you have a rear window, maybe you don't. You're gonna have to just get creative and figure out what works for you in terms of feeding the cable out. Personally, I didn't mind that it does have uh, both a power cable feed because I wouldn't want to deal with having to charge batteries. Um, I like that it was directly powered by a 12 voltage source coming directly from my truck. And as far as the video feed cable, I prefer that as well because there was zero latency. Um, the only thing wireless was the controller and there was no noticeable delay. It worked great every time. So after you get everything plugged in and it, after that point it's plug and play, you get the monitor set up where you want it. Uh, you don't actually have to use the monitor. There is an app. The app controls it in the same manner that the controller does. You can actually just swipe on the screen and kind of pinch and zoom and it's very intuitive. There's a recording button. It's very simple on both the screen itself as well as the app. You do have a very nice and what I found to be incredibly useful user interface that kind of looks like a compass. It lets you know which direction the camera is facing. So obviously you want to make sure when you install it on your vehicle that it's pointing forward so that you have some sense of direction in terms of where you're actually looking. So it was very nice, um, especially for the driver uh, who, you know, is focused primarily on driving. But if I had the camera turned to the three o'clock position, for example, it's very evident to them, hey, this is not directly in front of me, this is to the left of me, right? So. Uh, I thought that was a very, very uh, useful feature on the user interface, and that's included in both the app as well as the monitor. It'll tell you where it's pointing. Now, if you get kind of lost in the sauce, there is a return to home button that'll point it directly forward again. That's why it's important that you wanna line this up, kind of center it on your vehicle and make sure it's pointing straight. The left side, when mounting correctly, will have your, uh, your video feed and your power port. So just make sure you install it correctly so the return to front feature works for you. Now, in terms of recording, it has a built-in micro SD card. I briefly mentioned that earlier. Um, the file sizes are very small. It's a 640 core sensor, so it's basically a 640p image. So you don't need a super massive card. My only complaint about the video itself is that the codec they use is a .avi. Uh, I would probably bet more money on that your current computer setup won't read that natively. You may have to download a third-party app or use an online conversion tool. Uh, you can get free apps, they do exist, uh, but your mileage is gonna vary. Some of the apps are, are better than others. So when you try to convert it to a usable file like an MP4, uh, you may think that your video footage looks bad, but it's just the app. So I think that's uh, definitely a nitpick worth mentioning. Uh, I'm not sure why they opted for that codec. There may be some reason I'm not aware of, but if they could update it to compress to an MP4 file format, it's gonna be a lot less work on the user's end. So I had to individually convert all the files so that I can then use them in my editing software to share them with you or to view them um, at all, right? You can view them in the app, but that's not super useful. I'd like to just take them right off that SD card into the computer. So that's really my only uh, only two nitpicks at all. The only, and it's not even an issue, but the only things I ran into was that it adds a little bit of time to have to take it off of this base to put it in the case. And then the video codec is definitely not the most user friendly. Uh, maybe you're lucky and your computer can read it. I, I was not so lucky. So that's the only things to complain about. Other than that, everything worked flawlessly and this thing has been an absolute game changer. Uh, I plan on using this now every time I go hog hunting because I'm always uh, testing out other thermal devices. I do a lot of hog hunts uh, for content on the channel and this thing has given me so far, and I'm not trying to jinx it, so um, knock on wood here, but uh, 
100% success rate. Every time I've used this, I was able to find hogs and because I could see them so well, I was able to kind of play the wind and, and get a successful hunt three out of three times that I've used this. So currently been uh, testing this for about 40 days. I wanted to just share where, where things are at with this. It's gonna be in more videos to come, but this has been an absolute game changer and, and I really have been enjoying it. So with that, if I left any questions unanswered, leave them in a the comment below. I like to try to be as responsive as possible. As far as I'm concerned, I, I do highly recommend this and I've really enjoyed it and it is holding up. If anything changes, check the comments. I will pin a comment to let you guys know if any issues did arise, but so far, so good. Really pleased with this. So shout out again to the channel sponsors, Warhammer Armaments, and Optics Planet, and the Formar Patrons. And I want to thank you guys. If you're still around, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, have a good one.